What's up, everybody? This is Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA Tech Plus FC0 U71 certification exam. So let's get into it. In this video, we're going to be talking about units of measure in computing. So for those studying for the CompTIA Tech Plus exam, understanding these common units is crucial. And in this video, we're going to break down the most widely used units of measure in computing, explain what they represent, and then compare them to one another. All right, so let's start with the most fundamental units in computing, which are the bit and the byte. So a bit is short for binary digit, and it's the smallest unit of data in computing, it can have a value of either zero or one. So think of it as the basic building block for all digital data. A byte, this is a collection of eight bits. So one byte is typically enough to represent a single character like the letter A or a punctuation mark. In fact, most of the data we interact with on computers is measured in bytes rather than bits. So for example, a text file containing a short message might be around 100 bytes in size. And it is important to remember that in some contexts, they Data transfer speeds are measured in bits per second, while data storage is generally measured in bytes. All right, now let's move on to the next levels of units. And we have the kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, and the petabyte. So these units build upon each other and are used to measure larger quantities of data. So the first one is the kilobyte, and this is 1,024 bytes. Although in many cases, it is rounded down to just 1,000 bytes for simplicity. So to put this into context, a small text document might be around 10 kilobytes in size. Then we have what is called the megabyte. Byte. And this is 1,024 kilobytes or roughly 1 million bytes. And a standard MP3 song file might range from 3 to 5 millibytes. Then we have the gigabyte. And this is 1,024 megabytes or around 1 billion bytes. Most smartphones today have storage capacities ranging from 64 gigabytes to 512 gigabytes. And a standard hour long HD video could be approximately 1 to 2 gigabytes in size. Next, we have what is called the terabyte. And a terabyte is 1,024 gigabytes, or roughly 1 trillion bytes. And modern hard drives often have capacities starting at 1 terabyte or higher. And to give you a sense of size, a 1 terabyte drive can hold around 250,000 high-quality photos or 250 full-length HD movies. And then we have what is called the petabyte. And this is 1,024 terabytes or around one quadrillion bytes. And to put this in perspective, one petabyte is enough to store around 500 billion pages of standard printed text. Large organizations like data centers and cloud storage providers often deal with data at the petabyte level. So for example, social media platforms, search engines, or video streaming services can have data storage requirements in petabytes given the immense amount of user generated content that they store. Now, as you move up these units from kilobyte to petabyte, the scale of data being measured increases significantly. And understanding these units is crucial when discussing data storage capacity and requirements. All right, now let's discuss data transfer units, which are essential for measuring the speed at which data is moved or transmitted. And the first one we have is bits per second. So as mentioned earlier, bits are the smallest unit of data. And when we talk about transfer speeds, we often use bits per second. So for example, an internet connection might be described as transferring data at 10 bits per second, which is extremely slow by today's standards. Then we have kilobits per second. A kilobit per second is 1000 bits per second. And historically, dial of internet connections were measured in kilobits per second, like 56 kilobits per second. Then we have megabits per second. A megabit per second is 1000 kilobits per second or 1 million bits per second and most broadband internet speeds are measured in megabits per second today like 100 megabits or 200 megabits per second now a common misconception is to confuse megabits per second with megabytes per second so remember one byte equals eight bits so if your internet is 100 megabits per second your download speed is roughly 12.5 megabytes per second next we have what is called 
gigabits per second. So a gigabit per second is 1000 megabits per second or 1 billion bits per second. A gigabit per second speeds are often associated with fiber optic internet connections and are standard for high speed networks such as data center connections or enterprise level networking. So for example, a network speed of 1 gigabit per second is capable of transferring around 125 megabytes per second. And then we have terabytes per second. So a terabyte per second is equivalent to eight terabits per second or 1000 gigabytes per second. Terabytes per second speeds are extremely high and typically found in supercomputing environments, data center interconnects or specialized network backbones. And this speed is used for transferring extremely large volumes of data almost instantaneously, often used in scenarios involving big data processing, scientific research, or high frequency trading systems. Now, understanding these units of data transfer is crucial, especially when comparing the speed and efficiency of internet connections, network transfers, or data communication across different platforms. And remember that higher units like gigabits per second and terabytes per second signify extremely fast data transfer, critical for high performance computing and large scale data movement. All right, the next unit to cover is the Hertz and Hertz is used to measure frequency, which in computing often relates to clock speed or the speed of a processor. So we have the standard Hertz. So one Hertz equals one cycle per second in computing. This often refers to the number of cycles a CPU can execute per second. So for example, a CPU running at one Hertz will be performing one operation per second, which is extremely slow. Then we have what is called a kilohertz, megahertz, and and the gigahertz. So kilohertz, this is 1000 hertz. Megahertz is 1 million hertz. Gigahertz is 1 billion hertz. And modern processors are typically measured in gigahertz, such as 2.5 gigahertz or 3.6 gigahertz, indicating that they can perform billions of operations per second. Now, the faster the clock speed measured in hertz, the more operations a processor can perform per second, which generally leads to faster performance. So for traditional hard disk drives, an important unit of measure is RPM, which stands for revolutions per minute. And revolutions per minute, this unit measures how fast the platters inside a hard drive spin. And common RPM values for hard disk drives are 5,400 RPMs and 7,200 RPMs with higher speeds offering faster read-write performance. Now note that solid state drives do not have RPMs because they have no moving parts. Plus they're much faster than traditional additional hard disk drives. Now, understanding RPM is important when comparing the performance of hard drives as it can significantly impact data read and write speeds. All right, finally, let's cover watts, which measures power consumption in computing devices. Watts measures the rate of energy transfer and are used to describe how much power a device consumes. Devices like laptops might use 30 to 90 watts, while gaming desktops could use over 500 watts, especially if they have powerful CPUs and GPUs. Knowing the wattage is critical for power supply selection in computer systems and for understanding energy efficiency. And understanding watts helps in making informed choices about power requirements, especially when building or upgrading a computer. So in conclusion, understanding units of measure is foundational for anyone studying for the CompTIA Tech Plus certification exam. So here's a quick recap. Bit and byte are the building blocks of data. Larger units like kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, and terabytes help measure data storage. Data transfer rates are measured in bits per second, kilobits per second, and megabits per second, which is crucial for understanding communication speeds. Hertz is used to measure frequency and processor speed, such as gigahertz for CPUs. RPM measures the speed of traditional hard drives, which impacts their performance. And watts indicates the power consumption of computing devices. By mastering these units, you'll have a better understanding of how data is stored, transferred, processed, and powered. All right, now it's time for our favorite part of the video, the check on learning. So the first question is, which of the following units is most commonly used to measure the speed of a computer processor? Would it be A, megabytes, B, hertz, C, gigabytes, or D, watts? 
And the correct answer would be Hertz. So the speed of a computer processor is measured in Hertz, typically in gigahertz. This indicates the number of cycles a processor can complete per second. Megabytes and gigabytes are units of data storage, while watts measures power consumption. Next question. If a storage device has a capacity of one terabyte, how many gigabytes is it equivalent to? Would it be 100 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes, 1024 gigabytes, or 2048 gigabytes? The correct answer is 1024 gigabytes. So one terabyte is equivalent to 1024 gigabytes. The relationship between these units is based on the binary system used in computing where one terabyte equals 1024 gigabytes and one gigabyte equals 1024 megabytes and so on. All right, final question. Which unit of measurement is used to describe the speed of data transfer in a network? Would it be revolutions per minute, megabits per second, gigahertz, or megabytes per second? All right, and the correct answer is megabits per second. So network speeds are often measured in megabits per second or gigabits per second, representing the rate of data transfer. Megabytes per second is also a data transfer rate, but less commonly used for network speeds. RPM is related to rotational speeds of devices like hard drives, and gigahertz measures processor speed.